Hi, and welcome back to Kingdom Come Deliverance, uh, where we want to try to go for the Hans Capon quest. Uh, and Hans Capon is a guy that I wanted to find for a very long time and tried to, to find him somewhere and looked for his horse. Oh, there was his horse and I'm going to the tavern that's next to it to see whether he's there. Greetings. Goodbye. But he never was there where his, uh, where his horse was. So uh, it was a difficult thing to find him. But here he stands. I'm glad you're here, Henry. What's happening, sir? Uncle Sahanush sent for me. No doubt he wants to give me another ear bashing about the error of my ways. And he said to bring you too. What has it got to do with me? Plenty. You're in it with me ever since that hunt. All right. We should get going then, shouldn't we, Sir Hans? The sooner we get it over and done with, the better. I suppose so. Right away. I put some of my old clothes in a trunk for you. I don't want you making me look bad in front of Hanush. But I see it wasn't necessary. You look as smart as any courtier. Thanks. I try my best. So I see. But you can come and get those clothes later anyway. They're a little worn, but they're as fine as anything you'll get in the county. Ah, my charisma was shaked and my charisma was higher than that uh, of the clothes uh, they wanted to give to me. Well, because I'm wearing the Lord of Labour armor set. Shall we say, chaperone? Uncle. My lord. I hope we haven't dragged you away from anything too important. Not at all, Uncle. We like were just... Like boozing and whoring, for instance. Uh, Uncle, I can... Perhaps you were busy causing mayhem in the middle of the night and beating up my subjects. <sighs> no, it wasn't... Henry and I were just... Henry's as big a fool as you are. But he's not my ward, thank Christ. What the hell do the pair of you think you're doing? There are people in this fiefdom who work from dawn to dusk to put food on their tables and on yours, may I remind you. And then they look at you, Hans, their lord and master, and see a drunken layabout. That fellow you beat up last night was a guard, a last new guard night. on the town watch. And he couldn't report for duty this morning because of his injuries. I had the bailiff here complaining, and could I tell him what I really think about this whole sorry affair? Of course not. That would demean me. And you too. So I had to sit gaping like a stuffed owl and listen to his grievances. Maybe you Hanush think is right. you're bored here, you can get away with anything. But you're sadly mistaken, you blockhead. But the I Lord think I know why Captain do it. Only as long as he commands the loyalty of his subjects. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you the folk here are not exactly enchanted at the prospect of having you in charge. That was the last straw, Capon. One more of your escapades and I'll send you to your mother in Polna. For all I care, she can dress you up like a wench and marry you off to some Hungarian. Uncle, that arson Archibald tried to murder me. What was I to do? Oh, don't exaggerate. Well, I'm hardly surprised after you molested his girl and humiliated him. Well, I was only... Oh, I'm don't so whine, for I'm heaven's sorry. sake. It's about time you started taking some responsibility. I have a job for you. Maybe that will keep you out of mischief. Sir Milota of Oleshna has turned up here. Do you know him? Isn't he Sir Bernard's cousin? He is. He came here with the remnants of his retinue to seek refuge. He's seriously wounded. What happened to him, sir? His fortress Oleshna was attacked by one Wolfren of Camburg. Milota pursued him almost as far as Neuhof, and engaged with him. Unfortunately, the skirmish didn't end well for Milotta. Wolflin of Camber, that name is familiar. Well, he's kin to the Oleshna lords too, a cousin of Bernard's and Milotta's, and their family affairs are a little complicated. None of my business, of course. I just wish they'd found somewhere else to thrash out their differences. Well, what do you want us to do, sir? Go and see Bernard in the courtyard. He got a report that Wolfland pillaged some other farms around Neuhof, and he's putting a squad together to ride against him. 
Mind your step, though. It's a family affair. After all, maybe more to it than meets the eye. The important thing is to get that damn scavenger out of the domain. If possible, without bloodshed. I can't afford to lose any men over this business. Have I made myself clear? Yes, sir. Very well, Uncle. Get to work, then. That's not a bad idea. I think Capone is mostly rebelling against not being able to uh, be the Lord. And that's why he's behaving that way. So this might actually help him. Go to Bernard and join the squad. How's that quest called again? Robber Baron. Wow. Robber Baron. The cousin of Sir Bernard. Well, if it isn't the world-renowned victor of the Ratai Tawny, Henry of Scalic. <laughs> I heard there's to be a tourney. Uh, I think that's a quest that we're going to do. So, what do you think about this? Old Anna, she's right about one thing. It's time to stop chasing wenches and start chasing bandits. It'll be a bit of excitement for a change. Excitement? I don't know, Sir Hans. Men will die. Don't be such a wench, Henry. What kind of a life would a knight have if he never crossed swords with a foe? What would he talk about at banquets, eh? You're right. Well, of course I am. Don't worry, everything will be all right. We'll ride there, hack those bastards to pieces, and celebrate with a good drink in the evening. But Sir Hanish said we should get them out of the fiefdom without bloodshed if we can. And how else do you suppose we can do that? With diplomacy? You can't parlay with criminals. That would just damage Uncle's reputation. Every lowlife would think he could rob him without fear of reprisal. Enough talk. Let's mount up. God be with you. Where's Captain Banner? Down here. Okay. Sir Hanish sent me, Captain. I'm to join your mission. And Sir Hans, too. Then mount up, youngster, and we'll move out. I would have want training. This is not my horse. Lord Capon, I had to press there, like I'd five times again. Back. You can forget about that, Bernard. I'm not going on an outing. Adam oh. sent me to handle this matter, and handle it I will. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Undoubtedly, Sir Hans, I just meant for your own safety. I know what you meant, Captain. Forget it. Very well, Your Grace. Listen, Bernard. About this robber. I heard some rumors. About his being a relative of mine and Melodas? Something like that. We have the same great grandfather, Urban, Baron of Aleshna. Wolfen belongs to a distant branch of my family, which, well, well, let's just say they bring no honor to our name. But I Apparently. heard Wolfen of Camberg was hanged somewhere in Silesia after plundering the bishop's estates. I heard the same, only, well, I'm sure you've heard what they say about the Camberg branch of my family. That they're cursed. <laughs> now, Bernard, don't you think I'm a little old for fairy tales? Think what you like, but I heard it from my grandfather, and he never paid attention to old wives' tales. I meant no offense, yeah. Captain. Well, tell me all about it, then. After all, there's no smoke without fire, and I never heard about the Camberg clan from a member of the family. Very well. At home, we always spoke in whispers about our Camberg yeah. relatives. When Wolfen's father, Wilhelm, came to visit, I'm almost ashamed to say it. You can rely on my discretion, Captain. Carry on. Well, the servants were so afraid of him that they went and hid in the barn. Father had them whipped, but even then they wouldn't go near Wilhelm. They were afraid he cursed them, and I couldn't blame them. Why's that? Yeah. Uncle Wilhelm's face was so badly disfigured, folk would cross themselves when they saw him. I was afraid of him myself as a boy. Was he wounded in war? No. He was born that way. You see, his mother, Countess Barbara of Hogwitz, didn't want to marry Wilhelm's father, my grandfather's brother. 
She never wanted to bear his children. So, when she fell pregnant, they say she went to a witch to get rid of the child. Only she ended up having quintuplets. Can you imagine it? Five babes born in one Quintuplets night? is... wow. Jesus Christ. And that's not all. Four of them didn't live till dawn. Only the fifth survived. And he was disfigured. Wilhelm. They say the witch cheated her. And instead of getting rid of the child, she put the devil's seed inside her. Yeah. Good lord. How dreadful. Well, Wilhelm yeah. carried that with him his whole life. When his yeah. own wife was in childbed, he had seven friars kneeling in her chamber day yeah. and night. It didn't stop the rumors, though. When his son, Wolfen, was born, he looked normal enough, but he turned out to be as wild as a stray tomcat. It seems he hasn't grown out of it. You're right yeah. about that. A few years ago, Wolfen went off to Poland, and Wilhelm yeah. got worse and worse. He cursed everything and everyone in his past, started throwing crockery at the servants. He was on his deathbed. He sent for a priest, not just to give him the last rites, because they were afraid that devil would come out of him and possess someone else. Then later, Wolfen turned up, even though he was supposed to be dead for years. There were folk who said he was dead, but that wouldn't stop the devil's spawn. Sweet Jesus. It sounds a lot more convincing coming from you than the stories my nurses used to tell me. Whoa. How are we supposed to deal Go with down. a monster like that? Midas and Cyril. I sent them to scout ahead. Those bastards will pay for this. They most certainly will. Let's go. We have to make camp. Hamlin, you'll take two men and come back here later. I won't have Vitus and Cyril left as crow meat. Yes, Captain. Normally, uh, let's talk a bit. Uh, normally, I like this game's pacing of when I have to follow an NPC. But this quest is totally screwed up because he's too fast and too slow at the same time. Henry, I'm glad you came. Yeah. And sometimes we we have to shove him. Fortunately, on horses the shoving shoving works. That's the problem uh, why they are being faster than normal because he's just normal riding, and I think everyone behind him is uh, galloping or trotting from time to time and so shoving him away uh, to be faster than normal riding. And that's a, a pace that I just can't really follow. Last time we went here there was a big human party. Oh, Hans. And I'm losing uh, stamina constantly from getting shoved around. Uh, so I have to uh, be careful not to get shoved off my horse. Although my horsemanship is at like 16 or so, so it should be fine. But I was afraid for, for a minute there, there. That's why I went in that double street. I went to the other one. In the second street. Talk to Captain Banner. Yeah, but I should meet up with him in the camp. Oh, that's the same camp we went to with uh, Sir Hans uh, um, for the uh, thingy quest. Uh, the um, hunting quest. Quest I called, I think, hair hunting with Hans. Greetings. What do we do now? First, we have to find out where those horses are holed up. According to the reports, they raided a few farms around here. So someone should go to those places and find out what they can. You should do it, Henry. My men would probably just startle them. Isn't it dangerous? About as dangerous as sitting here in the camp. Yeah, I suppose you're right, sir. Where are the farms they raided? One is uphill from Neuhof, right by the woods. One here above the woods by the crossroads, directly north from our camp. Tell me, Captain, how come this Wolfland is attacking his own kin? They say blood's thicker than water, but sometimes I wonder. Look at our king and Sigismund. 
So what's the cause of your conflict with Wolfren? Nothing in particular. Just that he's a ruffian, a treacherous bastard, and a bandit. No wonder the whole Camber clan is cursed. How are you related? Miloda, Wolfen and I have the same great grand. How do you mean cursed? Like I said, Wolfen's grandfather married Countess Barbara of Hogwitz. Only instead of getting rid of. We're all at the same time. All in one night. We had that during uh, during Can the ride. That story. Depends how you look at it. Wilhelm wasn't a bad man while he was in his right mind, but he was terrifying to look at. I still get shivers down my spine when I think of him. As for Wolfen, word came that he died in Silesia. Then, one day, he appeared from nowhere. There are folk who say death has no power over him. See you later. Okay, now I can get training from him. The last time I went around with him, the training option wasn't there. So that I had to uh, brute force my way through too many confrontations without actually having any chance at all. God be with you. See you later. The turny thing we're gonna do after this quest. But let's look at the map. There's one farm to the south, one farm to the north, the northern farm is, cl uh, is closer. So uh, we're going to that one. Wait. I can indeed, since the game didn't save, I know that I can sleep and save here. So I'm gonna, si I'm gonna be saving. Because I don't wanna be drunk when we uh, encounter the bandits. <clears throat> Although... Yeah. Being drunk does give me benefits, but I don't really like just being drunk. Yeah. It just doesn't feel nice. So let's see. Northern farm. Is, isn't this where all, all the time the weird... Oh no, it's another road. I was thinking of one road farther to the north from here. I have rather through the west. Sorry, the western road. I was thinking about that. Huh. They look alright. God be with you. Captain Bernard sent me. I'm here about the raid on your farm. What? I've no idea what you're talking about, friend. They raided your farm, didn't they? No. I heard there was some raids hereabouts, but not here. Something's not right. The captain sent me here to this very farm. The captain must have made a mistake. I suppose so. God be with you. Greetings. God watch over you, good knight. Especially in these dark times. Can I do something for you? Captain Bernard sent me. It's about that attack. Well, they came, took everything they could, and rode off again. I don't know what else I can tell you. We're trying to catch up with that gang, so I need to hear every detail you can tell me. What do you want to know? How many of them were there? Two or three. I'm not sure. My head's still in a spin. Which way did they go? I don't know. I wasn't watching. My husband made me hide indoors, and I only saw them through the window. So your husband was outside? Yes. He tried to parlay with them. What did they take? Not much. We haven't a pot to piss in which I told them in no uncertain terms as soon as they came here. So you're telling me they came here, you told them there was nothing worth taking, and they just rode off again, without further ado? More or less. But just a while ago, you told me you were indoors the whole time. Ah, uh, yes, I was, mostly. So were you inside or outside? Did you talk to them or not? Well, like I say, it was confusing. I don't remember much. I don't like you. I think I'm going to the other farm. Look here, I'm not sure what happened here, but I can't shake the feeling you're holding something back. No, it's just, it all happened so quickly. I'm still bewildered from it all. I'm the one who's bewildered. Let me make one thing clear. Those bandits are led by Sir Wolfling, Baron of Camberg, and he's not just some common outlaw. If we don't catch him, there'll be hell to pay. So you better speak up, no matter what happened here. Lord Jesus, why must we be persecuted so? So, what really happened here? 
first. Promise me you'll get rid of them. That's exactly what I'm here for. They came a few days ago, took a pig and a sack of apples. We put up no resistance. I noticed one of them had an injured leg, so I offered to treat it for him. That was very Christian of you, considering they came to rob you. All I cared about was that they wouldn't kill us. Go on. What happened then? They rode off, and I prayed we'd seen the last of them. Only the same evening, they came back again. One of them had been wounded, and they wanted me to take a look at him. They gave me some coin and took me to their camp. Uh -huh. In the morning, I came home again. I understand. They threatened you. They didn't exactly threaten me. They didn't have to. But if they get away from you, their presence they come back is and get threatening revenge. enough. Don't worry. We'll take care of them. So you know where they're camped? I'd like you to lead me there. I won't go to their camp, no. But I know of a place where you'll have a good view of it. That'll do me. God be with you. Oh. Auto fast travel to a place where we can observe the camp. I hope that I don't spawn inside their their plain view because I don't have my stealth clothes on. I'm not going any further. If they saw me, I'd be done for. The camp's not far away in this direction. Thanks. And don't worry. I'll deal with those bastards. I pray you do. Wait here. This stupid dog is always giving my position away. Uh, none of that. None of this. None of this. None of this. That can stay, that can go away. Silvering goes away because it has visibility. Visibility is now one and noise is zero. Because I'm in a forest and I have the forester perk, it's great. Forester perk, I think it came from hunting. So let's see. Forester. For your conspicuousness and visibility for sharply in the woods. So I'm I'm basically invisible. Or I should be. I hope. That camp. I've been to that camp. That's the one where the apples were lying on the ground. Oh. We should have a good view of the camp from here. Like I found it. I better get back and report to Captain Bernard. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I see 12, but there might be more around scouting. That might be number 13 over there. That dark spot. But I don't know, it might be a tanning rack. So let's... Let's say 12. Go away again, please. We weren't anywhere close to be be able to being seen so uh god which one was it D the lighter one okay got my stuff back on back up to 17 charisma i'll still use speech because my speech is now bigger than my charisma which is great but this yeah. now allows me to uh, to write again, back again. Uh, so I just want my charisma being up so that um, I mo want my armor on in ca case of combat. And I want my charisma to being up because I, um, uh, I'd like to have the option to take a better dialogue option that I like more from the phrasing of what I'm going to say. And I'm not one to just min max speech, speech and then saying I'm going for speech now every time because that might actually be very stupid. 
And here we are at the camp. Let's report to Sir Hanush. Uh, do we need washing? No, we don't. Good health to you. I found that encampment. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Is it far? Not really. How many men did you see? Twelve. Around ten. Part fifteen. About fifteen. Shit. That won't be easy. Oh well, nothing to be done. Wolfen of Camberg must hang from the ramparts in Ratai. Wouldn't it be better to parley with them, sir? Parley with robbers? You must be out of your mind, lad. I gave Sir Hannes my word I'd look out for his men, and I intend to keep it. So it's my duty to advise a parley. You're going to advise me? You're not seeing straight, Captain. No wonder, since Wolflin's your kin. Please, just grant me one thing. Let me go and parley. I'll find out more, and maybe we can settle everything without losing any men. You want to parley? Listen, Henry, you can't rely on Wolflin to act honorably. There's every chance you won't come back. Don't worry. I know it's a risky business, but have you got anyone better for the job? Hmm. No, I'm sorry to say I haven't. And Wolflin's a conceited bastard. If he knows you come from me, he'll receive you just for a chance to tell me to go to hell. I'll give you a livery with my coat of arms, so it's clear you're my messenger. And you'll have to go unarmed. Thank you, Captain. I'll do my best. I hope so. And try and come back in one piece. I don't want to explain to Sir Radzig why I sent his favorite into a robber baron's camp unarmed. <laughs> okay, unarmed. And with a thing. Oleshnitz Waffenrock. The Waffenrock was a loose outer garment, usually linen worn over armor. It carried the colors of the Lord. Okay, that's nothing too special. Okay. We put on that. Okay, that livery looks interesting with fishes and lilies. Interesting. That's the iconography of lilies, I think. Might be a bit off. No, I don't th see the other ones. So it's uh, clover iconography. Interesting. But let's get rid of all my weapons. Put on Sir Barnard's clothes and go unarmed. I'm gonna go in the general direction, but I wanna stop like here so that I can yeah. go off the horse and go on foot. Yeah. So this time I took the charisma option and I was scared to seeing it fail, but it didn't fail because I like the option better because it is that way. We got a job and we got a real job description from Hanush and we're gonna live up to that job description. Fucking hell, is it really raining? Oh, this is just a little bend in the road. Okay, one road bent further. Wanna go through yeah. the woods as little as possible? Yeah. Because um, uh, that will make my uh, clothes dirty. Especially since it's raining now. And also don't go to through the bushes uh, because that will tear will will make a few tears appear in my clothes, which will also lower my charisma and I want that option of charismaing them. And that's why I'm going like this. And that was already bad, but nothing did happen. Okay. So let's talk to those guys. Hey, you stupid buffoons. Hey, you! What do you want? I'm Captain Bernard Zenboy. I'm here to parley. Why should I trust you? I'm unarmed. What harm can I do? Mm -hmm. That's true. And you are wearing I'm wearing the same hat, colors. that's why. I suppose I should take you to Sir Wolflin. But if you try any tricks, you'll regret it. 
Understood. You have, you have a weirdly uh, low volume voice again. Now want to. Um, we're having trouble. Uh, Who do guess. we have here? What's your name, boy? Henry. I'm a messenger from. I know, from my beloved cousin, Sir Bernard of Aleshna. He doesn't so, look that bad. What exactly is your? He message? sometimes said that he looked bad. Leave loot, leave loot and pay compensation. You can leave with your loot. Duel, family cursed. Why are you hurting the lords of Oleshna? Compensation. We offer you safe conduct out of this domain if you leave everything you stole from Sahanish's subjects and pay three score groschen in compensation. That's a very generous offer. But tell me, why should I accept? Stink everywhere. Should I stay at home? Don't you know what's been going on around here recently? Should I? So tired. Bandits have been on the rampage all over the county. Cutthroats raided a nearby stud farm, and the locals have had enough of it. No doubt, but I have nothing to do with that. Try telling them that. On the way here, the captain recruited men from half the county. He intends to make an example of you. Why me? Fuck. No doubt you've plenty to choose from. Because you're the first one who's had the gall not to run. So you'll be the first one they catch, and I'm sure you can imagine what will happen then. And why warn me? Why parlay at all if there are so many of you? So Hannes wants to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. He'd be happier if you just moved on somewhere else, so he sent me to bargain with you. You're saying it wasn't Bernard's idea? If the captain knew I came here in his colors, he'd flay me alive. The devil take it. There's nothing here worth pillaging anyway. All right. I accept your offer. Tell your captain we'll move on. Don't forget to leave the loot and 60 groschen, too. There's no denying you're a good negotiator, lad. Oh well. No doubt we'll find easier pickings elsewhere. Better run along before Bernard loses patience. Okay. Oh, he had a nice shield. <sighs> oh, if I killed him, I would have gotten his nice shield. Yeah. That looks like very Game of Thrones with a burning heart. Okay, we're done with parleying. On my horse. And right back to Bernard. Interesting. That was really interesting uh, how smooth it all went. But I went ahead and talked to every person in the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> Almost now. So my speech has gone up to, to ridiculous numbers and I started with a head start of two. Is speech at, at full already or not? Almost. Yeah. So uh, that's about, I don't know how many hours I have in the game, like 80 or 90 hours already. And that's how long you need to, to talk to everybody around to get your speech up, which is... That's a lot of time spent on that. And now we can report that everything's all right, my friend. I've just come back from Wolflin, Captain. And in one piece, I see. That's something at least, but I doubt you achieved anything. I talked them into moving out. Not only that, but they left all their loot and three score groschen too, as compensation. I can hardly believe it. That turned out a lot better than I expected. The coin is for Sir Hanush, I expect. Naturally. Well then, take the money and ride to Ratai. In the meantime, we'll break camp and make sure those bastards keep their part of the bargain. Right, Captain. I'll be on my way. And Henry, nice work. Bye. Take the money? He said to me to take the money and go back to the place. So, uh, first of all, we want our stuff back on so that we can, uh, we can, uh, properly, uh, defend ourselves if something uh, should happen. But, first of all, I'm gonna ride back to that camp.
No, I didn't press Y, I did hold Y. To get my dog back from waiting. Okay. Stupid game sometimes. Confusing what buttons I press and hold. Uh, so let's go to that bandit camp because he said take that money and bring it to Sir Hanish. And I didn't have that money and I told them to leave that money. So we had... We need to be uh, a bit cautious because I'm not, I'm now armed. So that might go wrong. They're still here. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm just thinking there's a logic mistake in the quest. So, uh, we're riding to Sarnish now. I see you in Rete. We're coming back to Rete. Did he move? Of course he did move. Why is he over there? Is he in the church? Looks a bit like it. Yeah. God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? I have news from the camp, Sir Hannes. Speak. I persuaded Captain Bernard to let me parley with Wolflin. Bernard agreed. I'm surprised. Hmm. So was I. I promised Wolflin safe conduct out of your territory on condition he leave all the loot he took and pay three score groschen in compensation. Well done. It will take Bernard a while to get over his disappointment at not being able to get revenge. But the important thing is we're rid of that troublemaker. I must say, Henry, after all that's happened recently, I'm glad something finally turned out well. So am I, sir. And I think you deserve to be rewarded for your efforts. Thank you, sir. Take care. We got a Magdeburg Curus. And that's it. Okay, a Magdeburg Curus. So let's see, Magdeburg Curus. Uh, Magdeburg is a town in Germany. Uh, it has 23... I can just see that it's uh, worse than my one. It has less visibility and conspicuousness, but also less stamina and stuff. So this one will just be sold. So, um, I think I'll be selling some stuff and then... What's that? New DLC quest? Yeah, the Emerus at... Okay, so now the Amorous Adventures of Bold Sir Hans Capon are activated uh, because we uh, completed the last uh, Capon side quest in the main game. And we can now start the DLC, which is what we're going to do in the next episode. Depending on what automatically happens with, um, with uh, our discussion with him, if we auto start the DLC or if we have to opt into it, depending on that, we might do another round of the tourney first because he has a tourney prompt too and I'm, I want to see if that's different from the, the other tourney that has like some uh, some side uh, thingy going on some talky talky and law so I'm going to sell some stuff then I'm going to read your book and then I'll be off and today we're reading two books again the first is The Groom and the Apprentice Scholar, you wretched fellow, how can you so boldly bellow? You with no coin to your name, gaunt afraid of the cane, trudging through this world in squalor, ever burned by your labor. So squalor labor. However you may toil and sweat, no better garments shall you get. No, to go in wrecks is, pup is a pupil's lot. A bed to lie on you have not. Now you lie by the hard hearth at night but in winter you will have to fight to warm your bones by the fireside near for they drive you out with a key care fireside near you'd be blessed to sleep on the floor at least not left to lie on the earth like a beast shivering on the frozen ground with shattering teeth and frost all around and still you have no end to shores lighting the stuff and sweeping floors 
Your work may never be forgot, although you cannot sleep a jot. When on, cold, on the cold hard ground you lay, I'm better off, I proudly say. My bed of straw is like paradise, where at night I peacefully lie. Like a bird in the feathered nest of spruce, though at times I lie in dung, God's truth. But still I suffer a little pain, save me when I am soaked by rain. I must wait till dawn my clothing dries, and I wipe it clean as soon as I rise. So the cloth is clean and bright next day, mark my words one thing I'll say. The peasants fear me to a man, wherever I may walk or stand, or bow their heads before me low. Welcome, master, they greet me so. How even the farmer steps aside, and the chickens can hardly ha run and hide. I'm glad of that, for they, if they will, let them hide in my back until I take wi with them with me to a feast, plucked and cooked in their own grease. One thing I'll say, since you entreat me, I have no fear my lord will beat me. And the fable of the fox and the jug. Once a fox was searching around for any food that could be found, to an empty farmhouse she did roam, wherein a beetle had made his home. She asked a beetle kindly, tell me, whose abandoned farmyard can this be? To which beetle did confess, that I cannot even guess, I came here just a while ago. Little I've seen, the less I know. The fox began to look around to find ever anything she could hunt, hunt down. She sniffed around a bit and then to an iron stuff she went. As she turned and looked above, she spied a pitcher on the stuff. Good day, Jack, she greeted it. I trust, sir, that you are well and fit. No reply came from the pitcher, so the fox picked it up and took it with her. She carried it outside, a pa outside panting a heart where she met the beetle in the yard. Fox, what are you carrying? asked he. You can barely walk, I see. It's a picture that I found, she answered, which will surely be uh, please my master. At the top of the hill, the jug weighed her down, so she dropped it on the ground. She said, good sir, now if you will, I'd like you to roll down the hill. Don't take it ill, dear man of clay, but you're too heavy to carry all day. Down the hill the pitcher charged, the fox ran after panting hard. Pitcher, must you run so fast? My heart will burst inside my chest. The jack halted at the uh, reached the button and came to reach the button and came to a halt. No more could he roll, it wasn't his fault. Come now, sir, the wolf fox did scored. Only halfway have you rolled. It seems you don't want to go with me. Well like it or not you will, you'll see. Jack, you'll stick with me forever, from now on will not be severed. So saying, she tied it to her tail. Now, pitcher, come with me, you shall. In your own juice, you soon will stew. You'll drown in sorrow, I promise you. The devious fox ran with a yell and dragged the pitcher too well. She te she teach that Jack a lesson... A lesson cruel. Instead, she made herself the fool. Pitcher for your sins, you'll pray, no more you'll wickedly delay, and then forgetting in her pride that the pitcher to her nail, pitcher to her nail was tied. The vixen scrambled up on the ledge and dropped the pitcher over the edge. If you still refuse to pray, you'll drown this very day. But the jock float, jock floated safe on the water, at which the fox uttered, angrily uttered, Pitcher, you'll learn soon enough, I'll stop your wicked bluff. But I'll forgive you nevertheless, if you'll admit your wickedness. But the fitcher had naught to say, for no tongue he ha had that man of clay. This made the vixen angrier still, and the pitcher floating in the well. I'll humor you not one more wit. You've made your bed, now lie in it. And at that she pushed the jug below, the water into it did flow, and it started to drag the wixen down. She put away in fear she'd drown. Come now, jug, good sir, stop this game, I do implore. But the water put inside the jug, and slowly down the well it sunk. And as, the f as she saw the surface draw near, the fox began to cry in fear. Oh, whoa, what will become of me? Oh, Jack, forgive me, please, kind sir. And in return, I'll give my word that I'll not harm you anymore. If you let me live, I'm a sinner poor. These words she did say with her last breath, and down she sank into the depths. Till the pitcher sat on the bottom at last, to the fox's tail tied good and fast, with no chance to get out thus bound, that was how the wicks and drowned. Thus ends the tale of the fox so sly, who for her slyness had to die, outsmarted by an earthen jug, it was her own grave that she dug. 
See you tomorrow with more of Capone's quests. <laughs>